Derek's story here for a deep dive into Luminar, a new universal all-in-one photo app designed to tackle your photography needs, ranging from correcting challenging imaging problems to artful stylizing. Luminar features an adaptive user interface customizable to your needs and skills. Tools include one-click presets for instant results, image processing filters, layers, brushes, and screens. Luminar runs on the Mac platform and is Mac OS Sierra compatible. And this is a very elegant interface, very simple, very beautiful. Now there's a lot of power beneath this interface, but let's learn the buttons first and then we'll take it from there. So I'm going to go up to the top toolbar here. And first we have the open button and you tap on that or click on it, depending on what you're using. And you can add any image you want to Luminar. And one of the things I like about this is that I can have many images open at once. I think that's very helpful. Now, right next door to that, we have the export button. So we can export the image. In other words, you're exporting the work that you've done to this picture to an image in the format that you want. And we also have the share to and the open in windows there also. So there's a lot we can do just in that one little button. Now, right next to that, we can make our image smaller, or we can zoom in, or we can make it fit in window. Next door to that, we have the before and after. And if you like the curtain, the sliding curtain where you can see the original image on one side of the curtain, and then what you've done on the other side, and then move it around, well, we have that for you too. And I'll be showing you those as we work on an image. Next door to that, we have Undo, Redo, and History. And I think History is really handy. I like it a lot. We're used to being able to undo something, you know, maybe something we didn't like that we did, and then redo it, and then undo it, and do all that. But if you really want to go back, if you want to go back halfway to the process, you can do that with the History button. And I'll show you how that works when we're actually editing an image. So those are all right here. And then here we can influence how the actual interface looks. And I think that's very handy. This one right here, this shows our presets. Let me show up down here. Now MacFun is known for its presets. This application ships with a whole bunch of them. And they are very handy. They're a great place to start. And in the movie that follows, we'll dig right into the presets. But right now, I just want to show you how to turn them off and on with this button right here. And then we have the very powerful filter drawer. And I love this. And this is really the heart of the application to me. So you can have filters on, presets off, work like that. Or you can do the other way around. Super handy, super versatile, very easy. We'll leave everything on for the moment. And then we'll work down the right side here. So we have the hand tool, we're familiar with that. We have a brush tool right here and brushing with this, oh man, this is so easy. <laughs> I am going to show you things where you go, I have always wanted to do localized edits, but it was always just too mind bending. Well, that's over right now. Gradient screen, radio screen, transform tool, clone and stamp, the Erase tool, which is really like a spot healing tool, and we'll definitely play with that a bit. Noise reduction and cropping. So here we go, right here. Everything you need. Very simple, very elegant. Now, if you want to see more presets, you go down to the lower right-hand corner here, and there you can choose the different sets of presets that are available, or you can just look at them all at once as we're doing here. So that is the user interface for Luminar. So beautiful, so simple. I mean, I was working with it smoothly. I mean, without really thinking about it in less than an hour. And that is really saying something for an application that has so much stuff going on. So speaking of that, let's get to the stuff. Let's start playing with the presets and let me show you some of the goodies that we have in store for you here. I've heard people say about presets that they're for beginners, they're for novices, for people who don't really know what they're doing, right? <laughs> I don't think that's necessarily true. I mean, 
I use presets. And why do I use presets? Well, here we go. I have this image. It may mean something to me, but let's face it. Photographically, it's a little dull. Presets allow me to take a look at the possibilities for this shot. And I think that's useful. I think when we're exploring what we may want to do with an image, having these presets available to us, and we have a whole bunch of them, I'm in dramatic right now, but we also have basic, outdoor, travel, street, portraiture, and that's going to grow and grow and grow over time. We'll stick with uh, dramatic right now. Well, then I'm going, you know, I'm thinking about this shot a little differently now that I've looked at these different presets. Let's take cold mood. Hmm, I like it, right? But maybe not quite so chilly. Well, we have an opacity slider right here. Look at this. That allows us to say cool, but maybe not cold. Is that nice? And that's on all of the presets. All you have to do is mouse over them to make that happen. Now, remember before I promised you to show you before and after. Well, here we go. Before, after, and the curtain. Look at this curtain. I mean, that's a pretty big difference, don't you think? This is really dull now. <laughs> but it gets even better. It gets even better. All right, let's say I have this preset selected. And uh, I have used the opacity slider to draw down a bit, but I still want to do a little something else. Let's say I want to make it a little bit more crunchy or something. Well, let's go over to filters now. And what we get with the filters, these are all the settings that were used to make this preset. Is that nice? So we could adjust those settings if we wished. For instance, want to add a little bit more clarity? I can do that. Or if I want, I can even add another filter. Let's go down here and let's find a filter that, uh, let's say color contrast. Say that I want to up the color contrast a bit. And there I go. I'm done. It's really handy. So think of presets as not only shortcuts for putting together groups of filters, because these filters are what comprise this particular preset or any preset that you use, but also think of presets as a way to pre-visualize or visualize. Let's say visualize. Yeah, I guess you, you would pre-visualize when you're taking the shot going, I see this as a cold mood shot. <laughs> I mean, you probably wouldn't do that, but you know, you're, you're seeing that you want to do something, but then once you get here in Luminar, then you can really start visualizing just by clicking on these thumbnails, playing with the opacity slider, and then adjusting the filters that comprise that preset. So I think they're handy for everyone. I like them, and I use them all the time. Okay, let's dig a little deeper and get into filters. As I mentioned at the top of all of this that I, I think filters are sort of the heart of this application because here are all the controls that you have to really make the image look any way that you want and they're easy to use and they're flexible and you can mix and match and do all this great stuff so we turn them on over here on the side I've done this before and we can start with a preset if we want let's start with vivid this sounds kind of fun so again we started with a preset and that gives us a particular set of filters. And we can do all sorts of stuff. So we can add just by moving these sliders. Now, if we move the sliders a certain way, let's say that we bump up the whites, or we bring them down, let's bump them up, or bring up the blacks. And we go, ah, oh, I don't know. I, I mean, just making a mess of this. Well, you have this right here. I'm just going to click on this. You just start all over again. So you have a little reset button right there to make that all go away so that you can go back and sort of start working on them again. All right. So that reset button is handy. And remember, you also have history too. History right up here. So if you've done a number of things, then you can go back in time. So you have a couple different ways to change things there. So I've done this, and, and then I go, what? 
I want to add another filter. I, I want to do a little something else. We got saturation and vibrance. We've got a polarizing filter going here. We got some clarity. Uh, what else do I want to do? Well, just go to add filter. Now, when we go to add filter, this is very handy the way it's set up. So you have color filters, you have creative filters, tonal enhance, detail, utility, your recents, any favorites if you've marked them, or if you just want to look at the whole list, there you go. And if you're looking at them, you go, well, I don't really understand what a particular filter does. Check this out. You just go right here. See those two arrows? You click on them, and you get this little explanation. So if you want to know what Details Enhancer does, then you just mouse over it, or cross-processing. Have you ever wondered, well, what is cross-processing? Well, it's a cross-processing effect <laughs> that used to be used in the analog days, all right? And you get to see a little before and after example. Is that handy? Yeah. Then you go, okay, I got it, I got it. I don't need that anymore. Then you just get rid of them right there. All right, so let's say that I want to add a little color contrast. So I do that, and I just come down here. And maybe I want to change the hue a bit. Maybe not quite so cool, but increase the contrast among the colors, all right? And uh, brighten it up a bit. Let me do something like that, okay? And you go, well, now, did I make that better or did I make it worse? What did, what did I do there? Well, this is handy. You just turn it off and on. And you go, you know what? <clears throat> I think I made it worse. <laughs> so if you want, then you can either reset it right here as we did. Or if you go, you know what? That's not the right filter altogether. Then just click on the X right here and you can just get it out of there. Just like that. Now, a couple of things I want to show you around filters is that, see right up here? You can create your own preset, which are these little guys down here, if you get a combination of adjustments that you really like and that you think you'll use again and again. So you can save that. You can save that, and you just click on this. You get this. You give it a name, and then you create a new preset. And that's right there in the filters panel. So I like that. And then you can reset all of the filters. So we can go back to where we were. And remember, we always have history. So you can go back to, let's say, right here in time. Or go back a little further. Is that cool? I really like history. I think it's really helpful. All right, so we'll go back to there, and there are our filters. So I think filters are terrific. Now, we can do more with filters, and uh, when we start combining with some of the other tools here, such as layers and so forth, and the brush tool and all that. But for now, I just wanted to get your feet wet with them, and uh, we'll do some more advanced stuff as we work through this deep dive. So I've been working on this portrait a bit, and I'm um, having a lot of fun with it, but I've been using my own workspace, the Dex workspace right here. See, Dex portrait. And I want to talk about workspaces because I think they're another way to initiate the editing process and I keep talking about how flexible Luminar is, and this is another example. So what is a workspace? Well, a workspace is a collection of filters. However, they are set to zero when you start. So for example, right here we have Dex Portrait, and we have these things going on. But I have other workspaces here. So I have the default workspace. And I have a standard portrait workspace. Now, this comes with the application. And it's a great place to start. So it's a collection of filters that makes an excellent starting point for the type of image that you're working on. However, when I was looking at the default set for portrait, I was going, you know, I don't really use grain. So I took that out. And then I added a couple softeners. And the way that I did that is I just went up to add. 
And I said, well, you know what? We have soft glow, but we also have soft focus. And you can add them right here, just like that. And maybe the Orton effect. And then I can even drag them so I can have them in the order that I want. I'll bring this up here with these. They all kind of belong together to me. And then once I get it the way that I want, once I get my workspace the way that I want, you notice that it changed to custom. That's because I added and moved things around. Then what I can do is go to Save as a New Workspace, give it a name, click on the blue button, and I end up with something like this. <laughs> And it shows up right here. So workspaces are really cool. Now, let's say that I wanted to share this workspace, this collection of filters that I have with someone else who maybe is working on a similar project. Well, I can do that. I just go over here to File. And I say, Show my workspaces folder. Look at that. There it is. So I could copy that and send it to Bob and... Bob could say, hey, thanks. I just added it to Luminar, and now I have that same set of tools that you started with for portrait work. And I'm so happy. So workspaces are yet another way for us to customize the application for the way that we want to work and then remember it. And I think the remembering it is a really important aspect of this so that we don't have to set this up over and over again. Get the set of filters that you want, save it as a workspace, and then be efficient and crank out some great images. Workspaces will help you do that. For some photographers, layers represented the L word. And that's because you knew you needed them for certain types of images, but they just weren't fun to use. And I think Luminar is going to change all of that. It certainly changed it for me. I'm going to show you a few techniques with layers that I think just might resonate and make you change your mind about the L word. Let's start out with just a standard layered document. This is something that we're familiar with. I have this image here and this was a little too dark. This was a little too bright and I wanted to fix it. So I created a layered document. And how did I do that? Well, there's a little layers button right up here. And you're going, but Derek, you didn't talk about that before. Well, that's because filters has to be turned on in order to see the layers button. Aha! You also have a histogram button right here. If you want that, there you go. Alrighty, so here's our image. And the first thing I wanted to do is brighten up the foreground. So I created a layer. I went up to plus and I selected adjustment layer. There are two types of layers here, adjustment and add image. We're going to work with adjustment right now. And I created this layer right here. And I brightened up that foreground. Well, I just took my brush like this and I painted. And you can see where I painted. You notice that when I turned on the brush, we get this little control bar up here. And I just painted all of this. Now, our brush commands are very easy to use. We have where you can see the mask. You can get rid of the mask. You have a gear menu here that allows you to invert, fill, copy, adjust density and feather. Here's the brush itself. And then if you want to erase, you can select erase, just like that. And then you go, no, I want to paint. And you just do that. All righty. Very nice. And you can adjust the size, softness, opacity right here. But I'll tell you what I do for my brush. I just use the bracket key. So the right bracket key makes it bigger and the left bracket key makes it smaller. I just think that's an easier way to go. And you get the readouts on size, softness, and opacity right here. So I just painted this area. And let's take my brush size down a bit because I'm using it as a cursor also. We'll turn off the mask. And then any filter that I have here will affect what I've done. So now I can just make those adjustments. Really nice, okay, very simple. Now I decided I wanted to work on the sky a bit. So I don't wanna paint the whole sky, that's no fun. So instead what I did is I selected 
foreground tufa here. And by the way, I gave it that name. And I can do that just by clicking right in here. And I can type whatever I want. I selected this layer, and then I went to this gear menu, and I duplicated it. So you made a copy of it right there. Go ahead and get rid of that. I just wanted to show you how I did that. And then I named that sky. Now, since I had a duplicated layer, then instead of painting this all again, just made sure my brush two was selected. And then I went over here and I just inverted that mask. <laughs> Is that slick? So I just inverted it and now I have this. And then I could work on the sky. So we'll turn that off. And now all of my exposure tools work on that. So I could darken that sky, make it a little bit more dramatic. And then here's my before and after. So that's what I started with. That's what I ended up with. And I could make, I go, ooh, ooh, that's a little too dramatic. And that's all there is to it. Keep an eye on your opacity readout in case the brush isn't doing something that you want it to do. Uh, opacity is usually your culprit. You do have your blend modes right here. So if you're used to using blend modes, they're all located right here, including luminosity. Keep in mind this gear menu. And then just click on the layer that you want to work on. And if you want to turn off a layer, you can do that right here. Turn it back on. Same thing with sky. Very easy to use. Very nice. And if you wish to reorder your layers, just drag them and move them around. And if you decide you don't want the layer, click the minus button. I'm not going to do that because, you know, I did all that work. So that is the traditional approach to layers made easy. That's what I like about it, made easy. Now I'm going to show you even a better approach, or at least one that I like better, more than this traditional approach where we do a whole bunch of stuff with just one adjustment layer. Let's take a look at that. Here's an innovation that I don't think you've seen anywhere, at least I haven't, and it's called masking with filters. And this makes the layered approach seem old fashioned to me. We'll see what you think. Now we still use layers to do this, uh, and I have them turned on. You can see right here, I have the layers turned on. And I've just created one adjustment layer. So I have the shot here. It's kind of cool, kind of otherworldly. It needs a little love, okay? So I thought, well, I just want to do a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Just want to play with it. So I created one adjustment layer. I just went up here, created plus, did one adjustment layer, and I created this guy right here. So now we just have one layer. And I did a whole bunch of stuff just on this one layer. I didn't have to create four, five, six layers. I have one layer that made adjustment to the foreground, to the tufa, to the sky, all sorts of stuff. One layer. So how did I do that? Well, once you have a layer created and selected, and you go to your brush, then you just go to any filter that you want. Let's say the polarizing filter and you click on it to get the orange box around it. And you see I have a little mask here. Now all I have to do, we'll make my brush a little bit bigger, is just paint and you apply that filter to that area, just like that. So I'm just applying the polarizing filter here. And you can see that the mask is adjusted as I paint. So I did that, and then I go, okay, now I want to work on the tufa bit. They were boring. <laughs> they were, I'm sorry. I wanted them to be a little softer. I'm gonna make my brush a little smaller here. There we go. So I played with Orton effect. And you know, I just added these filters. I just used the plus here to add whatever filter I wanted, okay? So let's look at that tufa. So that's how it was before, and I wanted to jazz it up. So I just turned on the Orton effect and then click on it. Make sure your brush is selected. Click on the filter itself and then you just start painting. <laughs> I mean, this is ridiculous, isn't it? I mean, it's so easy. You just start painting, which is what I did. And just paint here, just kind of paint. And you apply that 
particular adjustment just to that area. Now we're all on one layer here. And you see I have my little mask there. Same thing, highlights and shadows. Tone in the foreground. I thought the foreground was too bright. I wanted to darken it up. Let's turn it off so that you see. You see that's too light. I wanted to darken it up. So again, select it so that the orange box is around it. Just make sure my brush is selected. And then I just paint it here. And your masking still works. You can see where you painted. And if you want to clean it up, you can do that. Just kind of clean that up. Go, you know, I went a little too far there. Just something like that. Maybe you don't want it right here. Okay, just kind of, maybe I went a little too far into the tufa. We'll clean that up right there. Turn off that mask. And if I want to make it more dramatic, I can do that. See, I have it selected. And you go, oh, well, kind of missed some areas there, didn't I? Well, let's just clean that up. Make sure the right brush is selected, of course. Let's clean that up. See? Ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. Just like that. All right. That's a little too much, so I'll just back that off a bit. Just wanted, I just wanted to show you for demonstration purposes, something like that. Isn't that wonderful? I mean, really. So I'm just working on one layer. I have my brush selected. I pick any filter that I want. I can add a filter if I wish right here. Let's say that I want to go to color, and I just want to do, let's say, color contrast. Make sure that I select that box. I have a brush. Adjust the brush to the size that you want. Increase the contrast, let's say in this case. See, now when I first increase it, I can see, oh, wow, it's going to the whole image. Do not worry. Just go ahead and play with it. All right, let it be to the whole image, because the minute I start painting, it's only going to be applied to where I paint. Wow. <laughs> Is that... All right. Now, if this does not change your mind about layers, then I don't know what will. This is just so incredibly easy. When you're done, go back to the hand tool. Your before and after works. We can use the, the curtain. You can see what you did. Turn it off. Save it. Export it. Share it with your friends. And don't tell them your secret. We're going to do one more layer. And this one is for fun, but hey, fun is good, isn't it? We have this Florida beach photo. Everyone's having a lovely day, and I just want to add a little drama to their day. They have this boring kind of overcast sky, and I want drama. So I'm going to give them this instead. Now, this is easy to do. You just start with your base layer. You go up to plus, and instead of doing adjustment layer, you add an image. And let's say that we're going to add the sky right there. So you just choose it and you go to open. Now at first the sky will take over the scene. That's when you go to your gradient screen. And then you just click to drag that gradient screen like this. And there you go. You go, all right, that's good. And then once you have created that screen, then you can play with it. And that's what I did here. So let's turn this one off. Let's turn this one on. So then I added a dramatic filter. I added a tone filter. And then I even took my brush and I did a little painting. You know, because the gradient screen came down, so I didn't want it to hit all the buildings and everything. Now this is obviously quick and dirty. So I just used the erase brush here, and I just kind of cleaned this up like that. I'll turn that off. Take off the brush. And there you go. You have a dramatic sky. <laughs> so you can use this where you add a layer and add an image, and you can put anything you want there. And remember, you also have the transform tool. We'll go back to this guy here. Let's turn this one off. We'll turn this one on. You also have the transform tool, which is this fellow right here. 
and you can play with that so you can make your your sky or whatever you're doing be positioned a little differently okay just keep that in mind so we're not gonna we're not gonna use the transform tool right now we'll go ahead and turn off this layer we'll turn on this layer And we'll see how long it is before these folks realize that a storm is coming in. Both the Erase tool and the Clone and Stamp are very easy to use. And they set up on their own layer. And you don't have to worry about this. This just happens automatically. Let me show you how that works. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the histogram for the moment. We do have our layers on. And I just want to clean up a little bit of stuff in the water here. So let's zoom in so we can get a better look at what's going on. What is Zoom in there and let's work our way down here to the water. Let's say I want to take out this, this rock right here. So I'll go to the Erase tool. And I will adjust the size of my tool, something like this. And I don't have to pick a source or anything. All I have to do is just paint over it. Just like that. And I can paint over multiple areas at a time if I wish. So, for example, if I wanted to go over here and do some painting here, I can do that, just like that. And when I've painted everything that I want to paint, then I just hit Erase. Luminar will do a little processing for me. And then just like that, they will be gone. <laughs> oh, you know, I fell in love with this with Snap Heel. I think Snap Heel just did a great job. Where did that rock go? You would never know where that rock was. You would never find it. All right, let's back out here. So I'm just going to go to full size. And we're done here. So I'll just click on that. But you see, we have a new adjustment layer now right here so it just created that for us and we can turn that off and on so if I turn that off then I can see my rock I can see the leaves if I turn it back on then there we go they're gone really nice I mean that's a very intelligent way to handle things and I could do clone and stamp too let's say this little bit of uh, white water down there was bothering me well just go to clone and stamp Hold down the option key, pick my source. So it's kind of in this little dark area here. So I'll just source there. Just do a little clone stamp. There we go. All gone. Click the check mark. It'll process. And now I have a clone and stamp layer also that I can turn on and off. Easy to use, intelligent good use of layers. How can you miss with this? <laughs> anyway, so that's a look at the erased image, which is really like a spot healing because it's reading the context of the image around it. And then, of course, good old-fashioned clone and stamp. They both work great, and they both live on their own layers. Up until this point, we've been using Luminar as a standalone app, which it does quite well, as you have seen. But wait, there's more. <laughs> yes, I say this for near the end of our time together. It's also an editing extension for photos for Mac OS, as well as a plugin for Photoshop in Lightroom. And it works beautifully in all those capacities. And for those of you that are holding out as Aperture users, yes, you get a plugin too. I'm in photos right now. I want to show you how this works. So I like this image, but the foreground needs a little love. And let's give it a little Luminar love right now. I'm going to hit the return key. We're in Photos. And instead of using Photos tools, which are nice, but not quite as powerful as Luminar's, I'm going to go to Luminar. So I'm going to go down here to Extensions. There's Luminar right there. By the way, here's my other favorite. Ooh, isn't that a wonderful app? We use Luminar right now. It's more appropriate for what we want to do. Now what will happen is Luminar will take over the screen for a few minutes and let us do our work. 
and this is the Luminar app. Hit the I key to bring up metadata. Hit the I key again to get rid of it. This is Luminar. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick a preset for Ground Brightener, which I believe is mine. That looks good. All right, I think we're ready to go. I don't think I need to do anything else. I mean, we can do the eyeball if we want. Before, after. Turn on the curtain. I'm happy. This is all I needed to do. And this would have been much more difficult to do natively in photos. One click in Luminar. Here are the filters that are part of that preset. You get all that power, but just one click. All right, now let's go back to photos and let's see how this works. So I'm going to save changes. Now we're back in photos. Look at that. It's beautiful. Well done, Luminar. Here's the part that blows my mind. This is a non-destructive workflow. So while I'm in photos, if I hit the M key, look at that, I can see the before and after of the work that Luminar did back in photos. And if I wanted to, back in photos, which I don't, but if I wanted to, I could revert to original. That is fantastic. What I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to click the Done key because I'm happy with this edit. And here we are. So talk about giving photos for Mac OS a real shot in the arm. This editing extension, Luminar, which comes with the application, does exactly that. And again, if you're a Lightroom user, Aperture user, Photoshop user, you get the same benefits in plug-in form. Luminar is one of those rare breeds that provides gratifying results with the first click and then grows with you as you continue to push your creativity as a photographer. I'm so glad you spent this time with me. I am excited about this app. I use it as an editing extension, as a plug-in, and as a standalone. And it just gives me the results that I want. It doesn't get in the way of my creativity. And when I want to do something that I've never done before, like get better with layers, Luminar is there. And it makes it easy to do that type of photography work. I hope you've enjoyed the things that I've shared with you. I hope you're excited about this app. I hope you give it a try. It is one of the best things that I have seen in recent history. And I think if you incorporate it into your workflow, you will find that you will improve not only as a photographer, but as an artist too.